three-way switch project is going to be a little different. You're going to need to go on Blackboard and print out the uh, pictorial diagram for the three-way switch project. Now this is going to show you component arrangement, how you should set up the boxes. This is not the ladder diagram uh, that uh, it's a little bit different for mostly troubleshooting. Pictorial diagrams actually show the components, okay? There's going to be something different between the three-way switch they're showing you here on this diagram and the three-way switch you're actually getting from this manufacturer. They have a different common terminal. They show you this one off to the side, it's a single screw as the common terminal, whereas on this one here, the single screw is not the common terminal. All right, can you tell me a difference though about the screws though? Like, what's the difference between those two? One's, one's what? Gold one's black. gold or brass, and one's black. The black one is going to be the one that's a common terminal. Now, when I'm using the term common, all right, that's not the same common as I'm talking about as a neutral wire. This common just means, pass me that meter right there, that it shows that it shares this terminal with the other two screws. So this is going to be, this is the most important one. The one coming up on this side from the power source, the hot wire, has got to get tied to this common screw. And then on the other three-way switch that you're going to put on the other side, this common screw has got to go to the light fixture, to the brass light fixture. Where is the light fixture, by the way? There was a piece, a plastic piece that goes with it. All right, so let me show you something. So I take it and I put it, hold the meter up. Take it and I put it on one right here on the common terminal. And depending on, there's no on or off now with these three-way switches. <clears throat> there's no on or off now with the three-way switches. It doesn't say on or off anymore. It just says right there, blank. So when it's up like that, the common's going from here to this screw. Hear how it tones? And then when I flip it down, it's not to that screw anymore. It went over to the other screw, the other pole. So this is a single pole because it has one power source coming in, but it's now a double throw. Where the other switch was a single pole, single throw, it was either on or off. Depending on the position of this switch, whether it's up or down, is going to determine where, which side the power is going to through the switch. Okay? So the screws that are brass doesn't matter what color wire you hook up to them. It could be a red wire, could be a white wire, could be a black wire. And that brings me to another point. The other point is, now that you're using a white wire, right, uh, for one of the traveling circuits going from the fixture box over here to your other outlet, uh, it's going to have 120 volts going to it. So just because it's white doesn't mean that it's, it's common. We always use common as white, but it does, because it's white doesn't mean that it's common, so it could have some power going through it. And this is where it usually gets confusing for a couple of the students because you got the white wire from the power source getting tied and going directly to the light on the back here with the silver screw. And then they got another white wire that goes from this box over into here. That's the one that could have 120 volts to it. So if you mistake the white wire, and I'll show you when I'm wiring it up, for the one that's the neutral coming in and you tie it to the black, and you turn it on and plug it in without testing it with the meter to make sure that it's working right, it will spark up. It will short out. Okay, So you just got to make sure that we're using the right white for the neutral and the other one for the travel. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to screw down my boxes. If you're lucky, then you can use the previous holes from the other person. Uh, but before I screw down the boxes, you're going to be using these EMT connectors now because this is what you're using, the electrical material tubing. All right, they also call it conduit, and uh, there's some code to it. In other words, if you look above you, you can see all the, for the power, for the lights and everything, uh, and then you notice they've got about a strap or some sort of clamp every six feet or so. All right, so if this was a real long run, you would probably have some clamps holding this pipe in place. All right, but for you guys, you're going to be making some short runs, a little two-inch piece of EMT. Uh, if you cut it and it gets out of round, it won't work you got to make sure it stays in round, okay? So you got to make sure that it's in round and you're not, and when you're cutting it, uh, you're clamping it with the vise, uh, it's not getting out of round or else you're not going to be able to shove it in. It's got to be perfectly round. And the set screw, don't take these screws all the way out. Set screw's got to be backed out enough to where it can slide in and then you can take, once you get it in place, lock it in with a set screw like this. A little different than the Romex connector, all right? Boom, like that there, and that's it. And then if you had a really long run of pipe, we would probably have to fish wire one piece, a solid wire, they call it fish tape, one way 
if you were trying to pull more than one conductor through the conduit. So they would push it through like that, all right, and then you would attach, make a hook like that, and then somehow attach all your other wires at the same time. All right, you wrap these around like this, and then you get some electrical tape, and you tape up both ends. And then what would happen is, one guy would be on one end of the pipe with all the wire, feeding the wire in so it doesn't get all chewed up around the edge of the connectors. And another guy would be on the back end like that. Go ahead and pull that. And he would be pulling, pulling it back through, and then that's fishing. That's, now you're fishing the wire, okay? So that's how they get the wire in really long runs or even short runs with a couple bends because especially if it's stranded, you can't really push it through like this. After it gets about two, three feet, it starts to bind and gets a little harder to push through. If it's just one wire, it's not a big deal. But if you got more than one conductor going through, which usually you do, uh, and then code also dictates how many wires I can run through this half inch. If I got like more than six or seven wires and it starts to get tight, I got to step it up to a three quarter inch piece of conduit or a one inch piece of conduit. Okay, so that all determines uh, a little bit about with the code determines how many wires and conductors you can put through. So you're going to need, before you, don't screw down the boxes first, although that's what you did first last time, you're going to need to set up your pieces with your EMT connectors and you're going to need to lock them in first and build the project up with the boxes and then you can screw it down. Alright, go ahead and stop for a second.